Hi, Bentley family. It's so nice to be back. Thank you for coming out to practice with me tonight. So as Emily mentioned, if you have some blocks or pillows or rolled up towels, we'll use those later on in the practice. But if you don't have them, that's fine as well too. So tonight we're going to do a restorative flow. So it's gonna be more focused on cultivating a sense of relaxation, a sense of calm, though we will flow a little bit. And we're gonna have an extended Shavasana and a body scan meditation at the end. So that's really a way to kind of reconnect with the body, and trigger a state of relaxation. So that should be really nice. So I'm so glad that you joined me. And we'll get started. So you can get started just in a comfortable seat on your mat. So we're just gonna start with a mudra, and tonight we're going to take Boo Mudra. So a mudra is a hand gesture that we can make with our hands, and it helps us cultivate a particular type of energy. So Boo Mudra is just your two peace fingers, and you can connect them right on the earth, so you can just extend your arms long. And what this mudra does is help to connect our physical body to the earth, and to help to cultivate a sense of grounding. So sometimes, especially with everything going on in the world, we can feel a little bit uneasy, a little bit scattered. So this mudra just can feel this feel safe, connected, and grounded. So you can take that mudra now, placing your two fingertips right on the earth. You can close your eyes here. And we're just going to take a few moments to arrive. And I think this is so important at the beginning of a yoga class because we do rush from activity to activity. So taking some minute moments to turn back inward. And perhaps the best way to start doing that is just to start focusing on the breath. And you can think of the breath as having four parts. It has an inhale, a pause, exhale, and a pause. So maybe just take a moment now and just as you're breathing normally, just seeing if you can observe each of the four parts of the breath. encourage you throughout the practice tonight to try to keep the focus on the breath in the body so we can make this practice a movement meditation. And so whenever your mind starts to wander, just gently bring the focus back to the breath. And I'll remind you to do that as well throughout the practice. And you can bring your hands to heart center. And open your eyes. Inhale, hands come high. And exhale, hands can come back to heart center. And we'll do that one more time. Inhale, hands come high. And this time on the exhale, right hand can cross along the left knee. We're gonna take a side twist to the left. So keeping the spine long here, chin away from the chest. And then switching sides. And coming back through center, you can make your way into tabletop. So in tabletop, shoulders are over wrist, hips are over knees. Gaze is straight down. So we're gonna see if you can get your hands nice and wide, connected onto the earth here. I'm trying to get them as flat as possible. And then an inhale, we'll drop the belly, look up, and this is our cow posture. And then on an exhale, we'll arch the spine, drop the head, and that's our cat. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch the spine, drop the head. You can take some more now, going at your own pace, just matching breath to movement. Maybe you even close your eyes here. 
And as you start to reconnect with the body. And if there's any other movements or shapes that might feel good to you right now, I encourage you to take them here. So if you spend a lot of time at the computer, you might want to stretch out your forearm so you can bring your fingers out to the side or even coming behind, pointing to the knees, taking some ink, uh, wrist rotations. And coming back to center. You can take some big circles with your hips as well too here. Maybe taking a couple in one direction. And then in the other. meet back in our neutral table. So with the gaze straight down at the earth, you can extend your right leg back so it's parallel to the earth. Hips are going to be square to the earth here. We can take an inhale here. Exhale, bringing knee to nose, and then you'll have that cat-like spine. And coming back up on the inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Coming back up on the inhale, and then exhale, knee to nose. And coming back up, holding it here, and then gently releasing the knee back to the earth. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch the spine, drop the head, and then coming back to neutral. This time, left leg will extend out square to the earth. We're going to take an inhale here, exhale knee to nose, coming back up, knee to nose, coming back up, knee to nose, coming back up, holding it here, and then releasing knee back to the earth. We're going to keep our hips over our knees. So we're going to take a, some big steps forward with our hands and we'll come into our puppy pose. So you can imagine the chest trying to connect to the earth. It won't actually connect, but you can rest either your chin or your forehead right on the earth. And breathing here. Just letting the chest drop through the shoulders. And then with the forearm staying connected to the earth, you can shimmy your body back and we'll come into our Sphinx pose. Shoulders or over elbows, forearms pressing forward. You can almost imagine your elbows trying to come back towards your ribs. So this is just a gentle stretch for the back, gentle back bend. And then you can release all the way down to the earth. You can bring your hands wide, so we'll gold post our arms, and you can tent your fingers here. On an inhale, we'll come up into our wide cobra, so shoelace side of the feet presses into the earth. Then we'll drop the right shoulder, looking over the left. And coming back up, dropping the left, looking over the right. Coming back up, we'll take one more on each side. So dropping the right, looking over the left. Coming back up, dropping the left, looking over the right. Coming back up, holding it here for an inhale. And exhale, releasing back down to the earth. You can bring your hands underneath your shoulders, pushing up in your tabletop, you can bring your knees wide to the edges of the mat, and then you can take a seat 
feet right on your heels as we come into child's pose. And just feeling grounded and supported as your hands and forehead connect with the earth. Paying attention to the breath throughout the practice. Maybe even focusing on the sound of the breath. And even in steady inhales and exhales. And then you can start to walk the hands over to the right, stretching up the left side of the body. And then walking hands back through center. You can walk them over to the left, stretching up the right side. Hands can come back through center. You can lift the hips, coming back into your tabletop. Curl the toes under. You can lift the hips, coming into your first downward facing dog. This is going to be a really bent legged downward facing dog. So keeping the knees bent, hips high, hands pressing into the earth, and head is hanging right between biceps. We can pedal out the feet here, maybe just stretching out the hamstrings. And just checking in with your body. I always think this is a great posture just as you start to turn inward, seeing how you're feeling. You're just observing, non judgmentally, just knowing where you're at right now. And then downward facing dog, it's always good to keep a little bit of a bend in the knees because that can just help to lengthen the spine. And then we'll go high on your tiptoes, bend the knees quite a bit, lengthen the spine. And then you can walk to the front of your mat and we'll meet in ragdoll forward fold. So feet about hips width apart, you can have opposite hand to opposite elbow. You can bend the knees quite a bit here, so it's less of a hamstring stretch and more of an opportunity to lengthen your spine. And with the feet rooted into the earth, you can just hang your head heavy here. Really just letting gravity do the work. So sometimes when we're in postures like this, we want to keep the head lifted. We tend to do more than we need to. So I want to encourage you to, throughout this practice, rather than forcing or pushing your way through any of the postures, see if you can get in and out with ease. Consider what is the minimal amount of effort it requires. And I think that's just a great practice, just to counteract all of the doing that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So take a step back and get into a more receptive mode. So we build strength, but we also need to cultivate softness. And you can bring your hands to the earth, toe heel the feet together, and we'll gently start rolling up to standing, one vertebrae at a time, almost like a yoga zombie. We're going to meet into Dasana with our palms outstretched. You can have palms outstretched to the front, feet rooting into the earth, shoulders stacked over hips. Just close your eyes here, feeling the connection that your feet are making with the earth. And just all of the muscles are required even just to keep you in the standing posture. And inhale, hands come high. And you can grab your left wrist with the right hand, extend up towards the sky, and then we'll take a side bend to the right. So stretching out the left side of the body. And 
coming back up through center. You can grab the right wrist now with the left hand, extend high to the sky to lengthen, and then we'll take a side bend to the left. Coming back through center, we'll take these goddess arms, our gold post arms with the feet rooting to the earth. Inhale, look up, opening up the heart space. And then exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, hands come high. And then exhale, we'll bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees, lengthen the spine, bringing the shoulder blades back. We can plant the hands on the earth. Left foot will step back and you can soften the left knee to the earth. Hands come high to the sky for your low lunge. And breathing here. And left hand will connect to the earth. We'll twist to the right. And then right hand will come back to the earth. You can straighten out that front leg. We'll come into our half split. So if you have blocks here, or toilet paper rolls, or hands, you can use those. Just bring the earth a little bit closer. You can inhale to lengthen, and then just exhale, hinging at the hips. And then you can walk your hands forward. We're going to shimmy the right foot out to the side of the mat. So it's at about two o'clock. We're going to come into our lizard. So you can just have your hands pressed into the earth. And maybe you even go up to the edge of the right foot. So the pinky edge of the right foot. And just breathing here. It's gentle stretch. Well, it's as gentle as you make it. And we'll be here for a couple of breaths. So you can stay right here, or if you want something deeper, you can bring the forearms down to the earth. And then if your forearms are down to the earth, you can lift back up and shimmy your foot back to center. So hands are on either side of your right foot. Curl the left toes under and then right foot steps back and you're in your downward facing dog. Mm, glide forward to your high plank. And we'll stay here just for a breath, keeping the core engaged, shoulders over wrist. Then you can drop the knees. Inhale, look up for your paddle posture. And then exhale, curl the toes under, push back, downward facing dog. Inhale, you go high your tiptoes. Exhaling, bending the knees. You can walk to the front of your mat. You will meet in forward fold. And root down to rise up to standing. Hands come high, extended to Dasana. And then hands can come right back to heart center. Inhale, hands come high. And then exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Inhale, bend the knees, lengthen the spine, shoulder blades come back, creating that flat back. And then you can plant the hands. This time, right foot can step back. You can soften the right knee to the earth. Hands come high to the sky for your low lunge. 
And maybe while you're in this low lunge, you can find a spot to gaze at. I'm not sure drishti. And that can help to keep you stable. But it also helps to keep your mind calm. So when our eyes aren't darting around so much, our mind tends to be steady as well, too. And right hand can connect with the earth. We'll twist to the left. And left hand can come back to the earth. Straighten that front leg, half split. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, hinging forward. I think so many of us are used to going so fast, so busy during our days, and a lot of times even through our exercise regimes, but sometimes it's harder to do practice like this. It's harder to slow down. And just like we need to cultivate strength and softness, we also need to know when to slow down, when to find stillness. You can walk your hands forward. Shimmy the left foot now to about 10 o'clock. And hands will come onto the inside of the left foot. You can even go on the razor edge of your left foot, coming into your lizard lunge now. Maybe you start out in your high lizard lunge with hands pressing into the earth, arms long. And then if you want to go deeper, you can start to bring your forearms for the earth. This practice it helps us to find the stillness and find that sacred space. And hands can come back to the mat, lifting yourself back up. You can shimmy the left foot back to center. So the hands are framing the foot. Curl the back toes under, left foot steps back, downward facing dog. Inhale, glide forward to your high plank and drop the knees into your tabletop. Inhale, drop the belly, look up for your cow. Exhale, curl the toes, lift back up, downward facing dog. And we'll take three breaths here. Remembering to consider this practice a uh, movement meditation. And so whenever your mind starts to wander, you can just gently bring the focus back to the breath, just like you were calling the puppy back. We'll go high on our toes, bending the knees, walk to the front of your mat. Inhale, bend the knees, lengthen the spine, shoulder blades come back. And then exhale, forward fold. And drop the hips here. We'll come into our chair pose. So our Utkatasana. I'm breathing here. And bring your hands to heart center. And going on the ball of your left foot, just step that left foot back and we'll come into our warrior one. So in warrior one, both feet are flat on the earth. The back foot's at about 45 degrees, but really putting a lot of energy in that back foot because that's what's gonna square your hips forward. Hands come high, and then you breathe. Noticing if you feel if there's some tension in your shoulders, just see where you can relax. And finding the ease and postures. And 
And you can bring your hands to heart center and open wide. We're coming to our warrior two. So in warrior two, we've got that heel to instep alignment. Knee is over ankle. And that right knee is tracking to the upper right corner. And inhale, straighten the front leg. Hands come high, gentle warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, we rise. And exhale, we come back down. One more time. Inhale, we rise. And then exhale, we come right back down. And breathing here. And you can flip your front palm. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, we'll come into our side angle. So right forearm can come down to the right thigh. That top hand can go overhead, or if you have a half bind in your practice, you can take that here. But check in with that back foot. Make sure it's pressed down into the earth. So in this posture, you can really think of being grounded and rooted, and that's giving you the strength, the ability to corkscrew the chest up to the sky. Come back to your warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And then exhale, windmill the hands back down to the earth. And you can step right back, downward facing dog. Windmill high in your tiptoes, bending the knees. Walking to the front of your mat. Inhale, bend the knees to lengthen. And then exhale, forward fold. And you can drop the hips. We'll come back into our Utkatasana, our chair pose. And getting the hips low, spine long. Feeling the feet root into the earth. And breathing here. You can bring your hands to heart center. This time we'll kickstand the right foot, stepping the right foot back, coming into warrior one now on the left. You can take a moment to set up. And if you feel like you're being a little wobbly, you can widen your stance. So it's more like train tracks than a tightrope. And breathing here. Bring your hands to heart center. Open up, warrior two. And you guys stay where you are. I'm just going to change my direction so you don't have to look at the back of me. So we're in our warrior two on the left. Knee is over ankle, arms parallel to the earth. And then inhale, straighten that front leg, hands come high, gentle warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, come high. Exhale, we come back down. One more time. Inhale, we come high. And then exhale, we come right back down. Again, getting sturdy in your warrior two. You can flip that front palm. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And then exhale, left forearm to left thigh. Side angle. Do whatever you did with the top hand on the other side. You can consider doing hair. So it can be right above your head, reaching forward. Or if you have a half a full bind in your practice, you can do that. Again, bringing the focus to the breath and maybe even the sound of the breath, bearing the oceanic like waves. And 
and come back to your warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, hands windmill back down to the earth. You'll step right back into your downward facing dog. And pedaling out the feet a little bit here. Just getting any of the kinks out. And we'll glide forward, coming into our high plank. And we'll drop the knees to the earth, coming into our tabletop. You're going to place the weight into your right hand here. We'll kickstand the right shin. We're going to come into our supported side plank. So the weight's in the right hand, the right knee. And your gaze can be right at the wall in front of you, or if it feels okay on the neck, you can gaze right up at the sky. You can either stay here if you want. You could lift that leg. And it becomes like a supported half moon. And staying here, or you can grab the ankle and it comes into a supported half moon bow. And you can gently release the ankle, coming back into your supported half moon. And then with intention, lowering the leg, coming into your supported side plank. Left hand connects with the earth, you're back into your tabletop. We'll take it on the other side now. And plant the weight into your left hand, kickstand the left foot, coming into our supported side plank. Now you can stay here or lift that leg, coming into your supported half moon. And then deciding whether you want to stay here or grabbing the ankle. Coming into a supported half moon bow. I'm going to release the ankle. Coming back into your supported half moon. And slowly with intention bringing the right leg down back into your supported side plank and then right hand can come back to the earth and you're back into your tabletop. Now placing the weight into the left hand, right hand will come high. We're going to take thread the needle so you'll thread the right arm right underneath the left shoulder blade so placing the right side of your face onto the earth. That left hand can either come to the upper left corner of your mat or you can wrap it behind you. And breathing here. And to feel that nice stretch, you must try to roll over onto the back of your head. And then left hand can come back to the earth. You can push yourself back up. Or right hand comes high. Or right hand comes back to the earth. And next time we'll place the weight into the right hand. Left hand comes high. Thread the needle now on the left. So the left side of the face can touch the earth. Right hand can come back towards the face. And you can lift yourself up. Left hand comes high. Left hand comes back to the earth. And you can cross your ankles and we'll make our way onto our backs. So however you can easily get there, you know, soles of the feet on the mat, knees pointing to the sky. 
And also if you have those pillows or towels, we're getting to those soon. So you can have those nearby. We're going to come into the bridge pose. So we'll take two of them. So feet hips width apart. You can see if you can raise your heels with your fingertips. Placing the triceps, backs of the arms on the earth. Inhale, just lifting the hips up. Soles of the feet press into the earth, just creating a gentle back bend. And breathing here. And then coming back down to the earth. We'll take a moment to reset here. We'll take one more. So pressing the feet into the earth, inhale, rise up again. And then exhale, come back down. You can bring the soles of the feet wide to the edges of the mat. Knees knock in for knock knee pose. This is just a nice counter pose for our back bending. It helps to stabilize the lower back. And you'll bring the soles of the feet together, knees open wide for your Supta Konasana. Now, if you have pillows or those towels, this is a great place to grab them. Just place them like underneath your hips so it's so much more supportive. Just letting the knees open wide, one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart. And just breathing here. Hmm. The hand and the belly. So notice on the inhale, the belly rises. And then just the exhale, coming right back down. So body and breath working together. It doesn't need any help from you, from your mind. And yoga means to yoke or the union of. It's really the opportunity to reunite body, mind, and spirit. And that's why people feel so good after a yoga class. But we don't actually get a chance to do that all that much throughout the day. You might notice that sometimes when body and mind are separated, so you're doing one thing, but you wish you were doing something else, or you're worried about something else, that's when we start to feel anxiety. We need to try to keep it together. So with whatever we're doing, we're giving that our attention. We're being present. And we can bring the knees together and extend the legs high so the soles of the feet are facing the sky. If you have a pillow, you can place it right underneath your sacrum. That can help with the lower spine. We're just taking this gentle inversion. And if you don't have a pillow, you can also just place your hands right underneath your hips. And that can also provide some support as well. You can grab the inside edges of your feet, or maybe even just behind your thighs. We'll come into a happy baby. So rocking a little bit side to side. And you can bring your knees hugged in. If you have a pillow or a cushion, you can remove that now. Maybe put it aside. We can come back to that later. We're going to take a reclining figure four. So you can take your right ankle, crossing it in front of your left knee. Now, if you want a deeper stretch, you can grab behind your left thigh. But if you're really starting to slow it down now, you can just rest the left foot right on the earth. So checking in and choosing options that will best serve your body right now.
and then switch sides. The left ankle can cross in front of the right knee. And again, if you want a deeper stretch, we'll grab behind the right thigh. If not, just plant the right foot onto the earth. And you can release your bind. You can give the knees a hug in. Now gently kind of shimmy the hips over to the right. Arms can come out long. We'll drop the knees to the left. And if you have a pillow or a cushion, you can just use that and make the bring the earth a little bit closer. And we'll gaze to the right. And come back through center. This time we'll shimmy the hips for a little over to the left. We're going to drop the knees to the right as we gaze to the left. I'm just using pillows however would be comfortable. So you can rest your knees on them or maybe even place the pillow in between the legs. And then coming back through center, give your knees one final hug. Maybe even take a moment just being grateful that you made the time for yourself tonight. And we're going to get ready for our body scan meditation. So you can lay your legs long on the earth, palms face the sky, but using your pillows or props, just get as comfortable as you can. So if you want a little pillow behind your head, or maybe resting underneath your knees, that can feel really nice. Just get comfortable. And I'll give you a moment to do that. And I'm actually gonna sit up, but you guys stay lying down. So it's easier for me to lead you through the meditation sitting. We're taking a moment to get comfortable. So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna do a body scan meditation. So what that does is we're gonna imagine a white light traveling through the body. So just see if you can feel the different body parts as I'm guiding you through this meditation. But don't be alarmed if, say, you can't feel your toes or a different body part, just that we spend so much time in our mind that sometimes it's hard to reconnect with the body, but it gets easier with practice. But really, this should be a relaxing meditation. So as you start to sink right now into your Shavasana, with head, chest, shoulders starting to melt into the earth, eyes closed. I want you to visualize just a white ball of light. And that light is going to run through your body. And you can just feel the different parts of the body as I call out the names. Let's just get started right at the toes. So you can imagine this white light moves right at the toes. And it's just offering a soothing, healing energy. And from the toes, it will travel over the arch of your foot. And then settle into your heels. And then that white light will start traveling all the way from the heels to the knees, but really Visualizing that white light spreading across the calves and the shins. Really getting larger. 
maybe even brighter. And softening any tension along the way. And then settling into the knees. And providing some ease, maybe some lubrication, some softening. And the white light will start to travel up the legs, maybe past the quadriceps and hamstrings. And getting larger, making it even more intense. But feeling its warmth, feeling that energy all throughout from your knee to your hip bones. And then the white light will settle into the hip bones. And see if you can relax there just a little bit more. And that white light will travel from hip bone to hip bone all through the pelvic area. And you can think of healing and releasing any tension. And it starts to travel up the belly. Maybe you can even visualize it expanding and contracting as you inhale and exhale. I'm seeing that white light rise. I'm going to focus it right on the heart center. I'm feeling a warm, loving energy here. All through the chest. And then it settles into your shoulders. Releasing any tension. Maybe even here you check in just to see if you can release, see if you can let go a little bit more. And that white light will travel from the shoulders to the elbows. So visualizing that area of your body, the biceps and the triceps. And softening in the elbows. And then traveling from elbow to wrist. So that whole area of your arm, you can just imagine pulsating with white light. And from your wrist, you can imagine the white light going through all the tiny little bones in your hand, softening, massaging, soothing, all the way to the tips of your fingers. And see if you can feel your hands. And now the white light will start to turn around. And the tips of the fingers back to the wrist. And from the wrist to the elbows. Uh, 
elbows to shoulders. And again, taking this time at the shoulders just to see if there's an opportunity to relax a little bit more. And then that white light will go across the collarbones. And settle into the throat. And rising up the throat, all along the jaw. And taking this opportunity to soften as well. So if your teeth are clenched, maybe you give them a little space. And as that white light goes across your lips, see if you can turn the edges up into a smile. And as it rises through your face, you can imagine it's massage in the cheekbones. And settling into the eyes. And just softening the eyes. Across on either side, over to the temples. And then reconnecting at your third eye. And see if you can feel it there, right in the middle of your forehead. And then that white light releases through the crown of your head. And just leaving the body soft and relaxed. And as you come into your Shavasana. Maybe starting to bring a little bit of consciousness back. You can start to wiggle your toes and your fingers. And then we can gently roll over to your left or right side, so whatever is more comfortable. We can spend a few moments in the fetal position, and still resting, still taking advantage of any pillows or push pillows or cushions or props you may have. And when you're ready, you can start to make your way up into a comfortable seat. Maybe keep your eyes closed or gaze softly at your fingertips as we meet with our hands at heart center. thumb knuckles to your lips and to your third eye. I'm wishing you love and light on your journey. 
everything that is good in light in me bows to everything that is good in light in you. Namaste. So thank you so much for practicing with me. So even though we can't be together in the same physical location, I'm happy that we can be together in the present moment. And I did want to invite you, so I do a free vinyasa meditation class every Monday, 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's a bit more vigorous practice, but I also do more restorative practices like this as well. So I would love it if you could join me. And I hope you have a wonderful night. Oh, and Emily will send you the link to that tomorrow. But I hope everyone has a wonderful night, and thank you for practicing with me.